So Leon Edwards is about to fight against Kamaru Usman. And I'm going to pose a question to you guys. Is Leon Edwards actually the most unlucky dude in the UFC? And I'll tell you exactly what I mean. I mean, I'm not probably going to have to explain it. You guys know he's had a string of very, very bad luck. I mean, unless you don't consider getting clipped with a heavy shot uh, at the end of the Nate Diaz fight, bad luck. It's just like he got clipped. But, you know, in terms of, you know, the virus and then time off and injury, whatever, all these things that have just like stacked up on him to where he's he's had his his, you know, career kind of either delayed or derailed or whatever. Now leading up to he's finally getting a title shot. Okay, he's getting a title shot against Kamaru Usman, the number one pound for pound guy in the UFC. Here's the question I'm going to pose though. Is it possible that this is one of those things where all the bad luck was leading to the ultimate good luck, the the pinnacle of the sport good luck, the biggest you know payoff you can possibly get. And I'm not just talking about winning the title. Because there is one scenario which equals your best case scenario as a UFC fighter. And that's barring becoming an absolutely enormous star like Connor, right? Like, like basically become as popular as Masvidal and then win the title and, and then become a two weight champion. Like this is literally like, that's, you know, that's obviously the ultimate, but let's just say you don't have what it takes to be that big of a star. And what I mean is personality wise, like Leon is not going to be Conor McGregor. That's never going to happen. He's not going to be Moss at all. That's never going to happen. He does not have an outwardly marketable personality. It's just not going to happen. So for a person like that who is set wired to not be able to be that kind of star, what's the best possible outcome that can happen for him? Hmm? I'll tell you in a second. But before I do, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. And if you don't like the content, then don't subscribe and ring the bell. I don't care. But I would love you if you do. I would love you if you do. And by the way, the sponsor of this video is IP Vanish. And the reason that I let them sponsor this channel is because there are a dozen reasons that you should not be operating on the internet absent an IP Vanish or a VPN blocker. That is just an objective fact. The more I learn about it, the less safe I feel when I don't have my VPN on. There are a few websites that are a little bit tricky and they make you turn it off. Like they won't let you navigate without you, you know, turning it off, which is concerning because you're like, why do you care? You know? Why do you care if I have IP Vanish on? What are you trying to collect of mine? I don't like it. I don't like it. And I also learned some new stuff. I'm going to tell you guys, this is, a, this is an off-the-cuff ad that I'm going to tell you a 100% true story about. So some of you guys know I'm in business with Navy SEALs. The Navy SEALs know a lot of things about a lot of things. And one thing that I learned is if you are ever on a public Wi-Fi and you are not using a VPN, you, you may as well hand all of your information over to a person who's capable. A person can go to Radio Shack and put together a system that will literally rip your entire database, database, all your, like your, well, I don't even know. I don't even know what the proper verbiage is. Anything that's on your computer, anything that's in your cloud, anything that's, it, that's on your hard drive, anything. If you connect to a public Wi-Fi and you do not use VPN, they can get it from you. And I learned that from people who would know that I just referenced. And so I always use it now because I'm not going to remember when I could, you know, connect to a public Wi-Fi. I want that on all the time. Anyway, so go to ipvanish.com forward slash Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, use promo code Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, and you can get 70% off. Same deal I got. You'd think they'd give it to me for free, but I paid just like you guys would, but it's worth it. Anyway, so, uh, so as it relates to Leon Edwards, like, the best possible outcome for anyone is to win the title and then fight Conor McGregor. And that is because you have a back end piece of the pay-per-view and Conor McGregor will sell more pay-per-views than you would do over a three fight series by yourself. And that is not an exaggeration in many cases. Like Conor comes on the, on the fight card. It does 1.5 million pay-per-views. I mean, that's, I mean, like certainly 1.3, 1.3 to 1.5. Now, how many pay-per-views is, is a champion that doesn't have an enormous following going to do, right? I mean, it depends on the card itself, but 
if they if they put up 500,000 buys, that's that's not a bad day at the office. Right? So you basically are getting paid. Not you're not just getting paid free three for one either, right? Like, you know, it's like, all right, well, oh well, they sold five hundred thousand pay-per-views. Well, now they sold one point five, they made three times the money. Uh uh-uh. uh. They made a fuckload more than that, dude. Because it's on tiers. You know, you're for the first zero to two hundred and fifty thousand buys, you don't get paid. From two hundred and fifty thousand up to whatever, you get paid a certain amount from, you know, uh whatever it is, I don't know, call it. 400 to whatever like it's a tiered system and once you get over a million buys you start making real money like big boy money and so connor fight is red panty night for real i don't and i don't like saying i hate taking other people's terms but that really is what it is if you if you have the title and you fight connor that is a beautiful situation for you that's why charles Oliveira is trying to sit back and fight connor you know, but Connor doesn't want the belt at 155. He wants it at 170, and he's made that very clear. Now, do I think that Dana is going to give a title shot to Connor if Kamaru Usman is the champion? I do not. And the reason for that is I don't think Dana want like Dana doesn't probably doesn't think Connor can win that fight. And and you know he's like I I mean you can certainly understand why he would think that with that matchup. Like, Connor has been susceptible to takedowns. Kamaro, before he learned how to decapitate people, was exceptional at taking people down and grounding them out. He obviously still has that skill set. So for Connor, if Connor starts hurting him even a little bit, he just takes him down. And if he's really smart, he just takes Connor down in the first round because once you, once you tire Connor out a little bit after the first round, how dangerous is he? Not that dangerous, at least not compared to how he is in the first. So it seems like an incredibly winnable fight for Kamaru, right? But if Leon beats Kamaru, okay, and you got Leon Edwards as your 170-pound champion, do you know who represents Leon Edwards? Like, do you know who his, who his management is? Paradigm. What's Paradigm, Jesse? Oh, Conor McGregor's management company? Weird. So you'd have the champion managed by the guy who, rep- who represents the largest possible windfall of money ever and your biggest fight uh, that you could ever get, ever. I wonder who they're going to fight. If Leon Edwards beats Kamaru, I will bet you right now that he's fighting Connor next. I will bet you that. I will bet you that. Because Leon and Kamaru fight what? at uh, What's the date here? They fight at UFC 278. Uh, 277 is July 30th. So I believe it's, uh, oh, August 20th. So Connor's not coming back till 2023. Like he's not coming back till 2023. If Leon beats Camaro, August 20th, I will bet you, I will fucking bet you that Connor fights him because, you know, and I mean, obviously the common sense is like Camaro would get to fight, you know, in a rematch because they split the first two. But Dana's going to put on the fight that's going to make the most money, and there is no question which fight makes the most money. Because you still are going to get Kamaro versus Connor after, or uh, I'm sorry, if, if Connor beat Leon, then you're going to get Kamaro versus Connor. But uh, yeah, I mean that, that man, that would suck for Kamaro, dude. He finally get he gets a he gets a Conor McGregor fight, and it's like the first fight in however long where he doesn't have a back end piece of the pay per view. He's back on his original deal, which, you know, I know he's got a, he's got a big boy deal. Um, I've heard it estimated, but I don't know how accurate it is, but he's on a multiple million dollar base salary. So Jesse, I saw the disclosed pay. It's not that much. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Cause that's why it's called the disclosed pay. Cause there's not additional pay. That's why they call it the disclosed pay. Cause it would just be his pay. If there wasn't undisclosed side letters, guys. Okay. I just saw Izzy uh, on the disclosed pay after his last fight. It was paid like, I don't know, 700 or something like that for his base. About that million, maybe. I don't know. He makes a lot more than that. His base salary is much more than that. Inside letters. That's how that works. But uh, on a deal like Camaro's, I would imagine that he probably makes like, seven i don't know maybe like 700 if he's the challenger i don't know though actually because because gaichi i believe makes a million um 
and he's when he's not the champion. But I could be wrong about that. I, that is what that's what I heard Gaethje say when he said that uh, that when the judges almost gave went made it go the other way, that um, he would have lost a million dollars. So, I mean that that makes it sound like he's on a million million. But what do I know? Um, but yeah. So, are you rooting for Leon Edwards? If you are, let me know in the comments. If you're not, let me know in the comments. I just think it would be interesting. Like, I, Kamaru is a fucking boss. That is a hard man right there. But, uh, but you know, like, it, it's like I, you got to kind of root for a shakeup, I guess, sometimes. Like, I, I think if Kamaru lost, he'd win the title back. It's just hard to handicap Leon Edwards because he's just, it's like, I can't, like, I can't, like, visualize what his game is kind of, you know what I mean? Like, cause he's like pretty good at everything. He's got a great cross, like fucking cross is a piston that comes out of nowhere, but he's like just good at everything. It's not like, there's nothing. It's honestly, it's like his personality. There's nothing that like stands out about him. Even in, even in his fight game, you just know he's really solid. He's really quick with his strikes, but like with Kamaro, it's like, that guy has exceptional wrestling. And if he gets you on your back, you are in a lot of trouble. But also now he has great, great fundamental boxing, great straight punches. And he could fucking decapitate you if you're on the wrong end of one of his crosses. I don't feel like I could do that with Leon where I'm like, I don't know, maybe I need to watch more of his fights again or like watch his fights again. But I would love, I mean, I, Given the guy's, you know, streak of bad luck, that would be kind of like a poetic ending if he actually beat Kamaro and they got to fight Connor and he made $10 million. You know what I mean? But uh, we'll see. We'll see what kind of karma he has on his side. And also we'll see if he's able to beat Kamaro, which is a tall order. Anyway, that's what I got. Love you guys. Peace.